So PRC stands for Publish, Review, Curate. And it is a shorthand for a model of publishing in which authors have control over sharing their work. So right now that means they post it as a preprint. When they feel like they're ready to share their work with the world, they post it online where anybody can get access to it immediately for free. And then R stands for review. So um, instead of the current system where um, peer review happens at journals where you send your paper to them and they peer review it before they publish it. In the PRC model, peer review happens after the authors have published their own work. So the main distinguishing feature between the current system and the future one is that review happens after publication. So um, you might call the current system RPC <laughs> instead of PRC. And then C stands for curation and curation um, is is the um, sorting of papers into groups targeting different audiences and levels of significance to try to convey not just what the reviewers think about the technical merits and, um, of a paper and its shortcomings, but also about its value and audience and utility. So PRC, Publish, Review, Curate. Two, two answers to that. So, so one reason now is that, you know, this is something that is, is, is the right evolution for publishing in the internet. So the features of publishing, most of the, of science publishing that we have today are relics of the fact that the printing press was invented before the internet. And so things like journals and grouping papers into individual bundles that we call journals and peer reviewing them before you publish them. Those are all things that, that made sense when you were distributing papers by printing them on paper and, and, and sending them around the world on horseback and then car. But once, once you have the internet and you're sharing things as electrons and you have basically everybody in the world with um, an internet connection, it no longer makes sense to use a system that was created for the, for the printing press. And the internet, um, you know, you can post a video on YouTube, you can, or TikTok, or depending on how old you are, and you can, um, you know, you can share kind of all, anything you create with everybody else in the world instantaneously. It makes absolutely no sense to not do that with scientific research. So the fundamental reason we're doing this is because it makes sense to do things this way in the internet. And then the question of why now? So um, it, it took a long time for science to get to the point that um, that they were ready to to kind of shift around the order in which we, we do things, publish first and then review and curate. And the key thing that enables us to do this now is that an increasing number of scientists have embraced preprints as a way of sharing their work. So they, they're taking charge of the P part, the, the published part, but just by posting the work as preprints. But then they're kind of in an unnatural and uncomfortable way, taking those preprints and sending them off to this, this old fashioned system in which they get reviewed before they're then republished again by journals. And it kind of just doesn't, doesn't make any sense. So the, I, the, 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 the fundamental opportunity we have now is that there's so many preprints out there and we have an opportunity to layer review and curation on top of these pre-existing preprints. Right, so there's several. First of all, there's speed, right? So, so um, you know, your typical journal, scientific journal today takes months, sometimes years, to, to get work out to the, to the public. And, and meanwhile, very, very few people have seen the, seen the work, right? The, maybe the reviewers have seen the paper, but, but um, the paper remains um, not part of the scientific literature for other people to take advantage of in, until it goes through peer review. So the first and primary thing that this system would take care of is speed. By giving authors the ability to share their work whenever they're, they feel it's ready, you, you accelerate the, the you accelerate the rate at which the science is shared. And if you do that right, you are obviously also accelerating science and scientific discovery and its positive impacts on the world. Um, we also, um, um, you know, there, there are a lot of things about the way we review and classify papers today that are, um, that just aren't taking advantage of the internet and taking advantage of the scientific community to do them. For example, um, the fact that papers only get reviewed once. Right. In the in the current world, you send a paper to a journal, it gets reviewed by that journal and then it gets published and that's it. There's never any 
other mechanism that really matters for people to come weigh in on the, the paper as views of the significance and accuracy and utility of the work vary over time. So one of the other things that this enables is by getting away from the idea that what matters is where a paper is published and moving towards a world in which what matters is what people say about a paper that the authors published, you enable a completely different interaction between review and papers over time and over audiences and so forth. So it will make, we believe, it will make the actual process of peer reviewing and curating the literature far richer, far fairer, far more responsive to um, to changing ideas in the community than, 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 the, than the current system, if you will. And also, um, there's so many ways in which journals have come to dominate the way that science works. So, you know, it, it, in, in many parts of the world, it matters more where your paper is published than what your paper actually says. And so um, we hope, and again, this depends on how well we execute on our on what we're trying to do, but we really hope that um, by, by um, getting away from this idea that you just, that, that all that matters is who published a paper and getting towards the idea that what really matters is what people think about a paper and who thinks what about a paper and when they think it and so forth, that you'll shift the focus towards actually like assessing the value and contributions of a particular work of science and the authors who did it um, more than just where it was published. Right. So, so um, you know, preprints are great because they get your work out there quickly. And, um, in, you know, we're seeing like lots of, lots of, Lots of people who are like trying to get a job, like postdocs are trying to get a job or graduate students who are applying for postdocs or faculty who are applying for grants. They, you know, they want the people who are reviewing them to see their latest work. And so a lot of people are um, taking advantage of preprints to, you know, post their paper on a preprint server and then share it in their job application or their fellowship application or their grant application. And um, um, and that's great. And and it really has changed the relationship between the, the kind of latest science you've done and 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 your career. However, um, you, the the um, the people who are reviewing your work don't get the benefit of, you know, expert opinion. And, you know, they kind of if they're an expert in the topic, that's great. They can read the preprint and they can make some judgments about it. But um, you know, either because they have too many things to review or they have too, you know, they don't have expertise in the relevant topic. Um, it, um, it would clearly benefit people, it, at both authors and users of the preprints, if, if the, the, you know, uh, people who had relevant expertise in, in, in reading, you know, in the, in the field shared their thoughts on the paper in a way that the authors could go to, you know, job application and not only say, hey, here's my work, but here's what the relevant experts, you know, think about my paper. They said it's really useful and impactful and transformative and whatever, whatever words they attach to it. It's, it's, you know, assuming that the judgments are good, it's obviously beneficial to the authors to be able to go not just with their paper, but with these judgments. It's kind of what they do when they submit a published paper in a journal they're going with their science, but they're also going with this kind of judgment of peer review. And so if, if, if we get this right and we do it faster and in a very transparent way, then authors will be able to go, you know, go in the, go to um, potential employers or funders or whatever else they want to do with their careers and, and share with them a work that has the, the kind of validation that comes with peer review or the, at least the, the, strengthening of, of reception that comes with peer review without having to go through this whole drawn out process of, of publishing. Um, right. So, so uh, obviously preprints are great, but you know, when most of us navigate the world of preprints all the time, we search for things in our field or for people we, whose work we, we admire and value and um, um, you know, but there are, First of all, there's too many preprints to, to read all the time. And so there is a problem with like making sure that you see the right ones and find the right ones and, and that um, you don't waste your time on things that actually turn out to be useless and so forth. Um, so they're potentially really valuable just in finding things that are of interest. But also um, when you're actually sitting down to read a paper, even if you're a complete expert in the field, you benefit tremendously from knowing what other 
smart people who maybe look at the paper in a different way have thought about the paper, either because other, other you know, expert readers or, or people have read the paper and found problems with it and things that, that you might not have noticed that affect how you would interpret and use the data. Or also, they found things that you didn't see, connections to other parts of the literature or things that were really valuable and useful that you might have missed when you read them. So uh, science is a collective endeavor. And, and you know, yes, um, you can get a lot of a paper by just reading it, but you get more out of a paper by having the, the, the backing of other people who've read it, who've decided to share their kind of wisdom and ideas and connections about the paper with you. And if when you read a paper and think carefully about it, you can do the same thing. And so our kind of hope is that every time someone reads a paper carefully and has something interesting to say and think about it, they will start sharing that with the community. And peer, peer review of preprints won't just be something that Eli for some journal does, but something that we do collectively as a community to try to make it better for you as a reader um, to both find papers, but also to understand and think about the papers. Because it's what you would design if you started from scratch with the, with the technology we have at our disposal today. I think it's, it's a pretty simple idea that, and, and that, you know, you give authors the ability to, um, to publish their work whenever they feel it's ready. And then you give the scientific community the ability to, um, to add their thoughts and, and assessments and, and whatever things that they feel adds value to the, preprint and how it's how it's seen and interpreted in the community, you add that to those papers. And so the fundamental principle is pretty easy. It's just that you give author, the, the internet allows authors to share their work publicly, um, freely and immediately with anybody. And then you can start to collect and curate the, the thoughts of the remainder of the scientific community around those papers. So once you start with those sort of two simple principles, then PRC just So all, all these ideas are, are easy to explain, and, and I think PRC is sort of, you know, maybe it's not an evocative acronym, but it's, it's like a pretty simple idea. The real challenge is, you know, doing it right. Like, how do you, how do you, how do, you do this in a way that, that maintains all the good things about the Internet and avoids all the bad things? Like, if we don't want science, the peer review of science to be a popularity contest or to be filled with, you know, spam and horrible comments and degenerate into all the things the internet can degenerate to. So there's a real importance to have kind of grown-ups sort of monitoring and controlling and, you know, not limiting who can participate, but making sure that people participate in a constructive and, and helpful manner. And then, um, um, you know, it's, um, it's really hard to go from a system that has existed for centuries in which everybody um, you, know, you know, whether they dislike it or like it, they depend on in their careers and in all aspects of, of sort of navigating their research lives. It's really hard to go from that fact to something new. And so our, you know, our biggest challenge and our biggest kind of um, hope is that the community will help us get from, from where we are today to where, where we want to be, that they'll see the value and advantages of doing this way and that realize that, that, you know, in order for this to work, we have to kind of break out of our our comfort zone a little bit and start to try to um, do new things and embrace change in the way that that scientists communicate with each other and bring the same kind of um, spirit that you bring to your research life when you're trying to be innovative and embrace new things, new ideas to the to the world of publishing. It's been a very static, stagnant world for 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 a very long time, and and I think that. You know, we're we're optimistic that that you know as preprints have grown and as sort of scientific community sort of becomes sort of massively online like everybody else that that we we have this opportunity before us. But you know, it's it, it, these things don't happen automatically, and so we really need to we need to make sure we get it right, and we need the community to come along with us. <laughs>